also, uh, I'm going to be doing, uh, I, I know I was talking about doing uh, themed Christmas videos, which I'm doing, but I just want to uh, sort of break away from that today because I want to do a longer one, uh, one like more like an epic type thing. Uh, but also, I'm going to be profiling uh, a certain event. Uh, one of these events does take place around Christmas time, and I, I kind of associate associate that with Christmas. Because I remember when this happened, it was in December, and I, I've always kind of associated that with Christmas. So anyway, so I'm going to be doing that. And you'll see when the video, when I come to that event, you can see uh, that it's very timely. You know. So anyways, before I get started, I do have a shout-out, okay? Now... Mac M R D S V U. He wanted me to give a shout out to his girl Bryn. Okay, so there's your shout out to your girl Bryn from Mac. Okay, so Mac and Bryn, I hope you're both doing well there in the land of awesome, and I hope all of you are doing well in the land of awesome. Uh, also, okay, so I got some uh, some gravy from Lee's. I got one of their apple pies. Do you haven't had an apple pie before? Now somehow they managed to throw in this little extra crispy bit of skin, so I'm not complaining. I got to test out their gravy. would not be the atmosphere for a little kid to be in, but aside from drinking, whatever, there's really nothing else going on. And, you know, living with his mother, I'm sure he was used to that kind of environment anyway. But don't get me wrong, 
she was very good to her kids and she raised them very well. And I'm not being judgmental, I'm just painting you a picture. Max was a lovely, lovely woman and wonderful mother. So anyway, I just can't believe my ears, you know, you know, he tells us that Elvis Presley died, and uh, Bert said, what did he say, and Kathy told him, and Bert said, well, don't believe me, he told me something the other day, turned out just to be a bunch of BS, I wouldn't believe anything he says, but I, didn't, I couldn't see why he'd make that up, unless he misheard, and he says, no, my, my mom told me, so I know that it's true. Well, about 10 minutes later, one of our buddies walks in. Tim. And he said, I just came from downtown. He said, you know, I just heard Elvis Presley died. He said he was downtown. That's all. That's all everybody was talking about. So obviously it was true. Boulevard, I'm not sure, but 
Elvis was in the background, and uh, he was singing. They had, they had a, a track of him singing, you know, Glory, Hallelujah. That was so powerful and so moving. I remember uh, people were crying, lined up on the streets. I remember policemen saluting this casket as it went by. since quit my job in the forest industry and I found a job working with a budget rent a car I know it's not a, a career choice it's something I just want to do do until I find something better just asked me if I could keep the place clean, you know. No dirty dishes, nothing like that. So I could show this so they could show the place. Everybody. He 
was involved in Rotary and Shriners and you name a club. He was involved in, in, in all kinds of civic things and fundraising. He was probably about, I don't know, 48, 50, 52, somewhere around there. Older man. Now, him and his wife had kind of split up the same time my girlfriend and I did. And he was telling me about that. And um, she said that, you know, if he was to uh, then get back together, he has to go see a psychiatrist. Because as he put it, he had been married for 15 years, and for 15 years he'd been coming home grumpy and, you know, hard to live with. And she said, you got to start uh, finding out what your problem is, basically. So in the meantime, he moved out and he was renting an apartment. So if somebody said they're living in the high rise, you knew where they were living. Now I think we have five. Well, four and a half anyway. So this high rise, you could see it plain as day, was just right up on the hill. I mean, it was a stone's throw from where I was working. It was right up there. 17 stories. Well, 16 because there's no 13th floor. You get in the elevator, it goes from 12 to 14. No 13th floor, but it's beautiful. Big building, swimming pool in the basement. So anyway, kids says, so what are you going to do in your days off? And I said, well, got to look for a place to live. I'm getting tossed. I said, well, why don't you just take over my apartment? I have to be out there by the end of November. I said, oh, that's perfect. Perfect. He said, I'll phone the building manager. I'll go up on my lunch break and you can meet her. I thought, sweet. So, lunch hour comes along, we're in a car. Just drive up there real quick. Takes me in. She meets us at his, his unit on the sixth floor. Facing south, so when you look out the window, you can see budget rent a car from, from up top there. Now when I go in, it wasn't a two-bedroom. It wasn't even a one-bedroom. It was a studio apartment. As soon as you walk in, living room here, bathroom, and kitchen dining room over here and two big windows no balcony but very very bright 174 dollars a month i'll take it so i was stoked I was living there, I was doing my best to save money because I knew I wanted to make a career change at that point. I decided I wanted to go back to, I wanted to go to chef school, but the waiting list was about a year and a half. As it turned out, it wouldn't be that long. I didn't know it at the time. Now, I had no furniture. The trailer I was living in, the mobile home, that came furnished, TV, couch, dining set, everything bad. I had nothing.
I did have a coffee table, but no furniture. Some people came over. We all sat on the floor. I slept on the floor the whole time I lived there. I had one of those little, you know, you know what bubble wrap looks like. Okay, one of those little bubbly mattresses, about that thick. I had a sleeping bag, that's what I slept on the whole time I lived there. In the dining room beside the fridge. No TV. I had a radio. stereo, my Pioneer stereo, real kick butt stereo, but of course I couldn't crank it up there, but I could still listen to it. So anyway, I kind of missed having a TV, but then it was just another build up. I remember my mom said, well, I got a TV you can have on the garage, but it wasn't the TV, it was the, the bill, like the, the cable bill. And I remember Bert. Bert never had a, a, a TV period because it was just another bill to pay. And Bert didn't like paying bills. I guess I was trying to save money. I kind of felt the same way. And I was reflecting back about 10 years earlier, back in the 70s, when it was kind of uncool to have a TV, you know. Just walk out my door and walk to work within five minutes. I could see my workplace down below if I had binoculars, I could spy on people. Not that I want to, but you know, I mean, it was, I was like, I could just see them down there. since about November 25th, December the 9th, I wake up, December the 9th, 98, I wake up, it's my, I got a couple days off, oh, I love my days off.
bright sunny day. It's cold and crisp. I mean, it's winter time, right? But it's bright and sunny. First thing I want to do is go down to my favorite diner and have a coffee and a muffin. Look forward to that all week. So, this high rise I was living in is right smack in the middle of town. One side faced the water. I faced the town. So, I walk down the street, a couple blocks, go across the street, and it's an older building, probably 100 years old. Got a big, big lobby. Lots of offices and stuff, you know, like lawyers, whatever. And you just walk straight through this narrow passage. At the very end is a small little uh, uh, restaurant. Six or eight tables, very small. Windows are kind of up high, kind of rectangular. You know, the, the sun's just streaming in, almost like, like ray beams, you know. And back then, people smoked in restaurants, and that just accentuated the light even more. You almost cut it with a fork, you know. It's just... It was very really bright and cozy back there. I loved it. The owner was a young fellow, Edward, about 30 or so, thereabouts. Him and his mom and dad's little sister came to Canada from Mexico when he was about 10. I assume his little sister was probably about, I don't know, seven or eight, maybe six, whatever. And he'd opened that restaurant by himself. He was doing very well. All those kind of restaurants just walk up there just have a tray kind of like a cafeteria style you just tell them what you want maybe grab your own coffee and but he baked these amazing muffins these lemon bobby steak muffins and carrot cake muffins with uh, cream cheese icing and bread muffins blueberry muffins apple muffins you know with strudel on them and he was a very nice man he was a very nice guy reading it over and over. Didn't make sense. Ex-Beatles shot dead on street. I, I, it's, it's, not, it's not April Fool's, what the hell, you know. Ex-Beatles shot dead on street. The, the two words that kept leaping out at me was Beatle and dead. And there's a picture of John Lennon. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, what, what could have happened? I mean, it wasn't like they said he was wounded or grieved. Absolutely stunned. I just, I, I couldn't believe it. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to wipe my hands off here. What I did was I, uh, when I finished my coffee, my muffin, I probably chain smoked about three cigarettes. But what I did, I picked up the newspaper off the table. And this is the same newspaper right here. That's it right there. That's the same newspaper. 
newspaper. You can see it right there. XP was shot down the street. Times call. This is the newspaper from Victoria. Victoria is the capital city of British Columbia. It's right here on the island, about 90 minutes south. those magazines now to share with you. So getting back to the newspaper with John Lennon on it, I tucked under my arm, decided to walk downtown, and I was just in disbelief. This was December the 9th, I, I guess it happened like the night before, I wasn't quite sure. So I went to a music store, and um, I was kind of browsing on the music store. Skydive. 
skydiving pizza video I talked about him. He was the one that went skydiving. And, um, I kind of, uh, you know, followed in his footsteps. And um, so anyways, he told me that he, I mean, he had a nice, beautiful color TV. And every time he turned on the TV, didn't matter what channel he went to, they were talking about John Lennon. And he was a couple years younger than me. He said, boy, he was, I had no idea he was so famous. I, I'm thinking to myself, well, dude, you know, it's John Lennon, you know, the Beatles. Actually, 
first. We already had a standing party of people who were up to stay in the cabin, and we was doing a lot of work outside, you know. The kids were playing somewhere, my ex. this Sony Walkman type thing. And she was always listening to music or the radio or, or she'd be listening to people like Dr. Laura Schlesinger or these, you know, people that, that talk, like talk radio or whatever, you know. And so we're out there working away and she, she's raking something. And she's got these ear, earphones in there. And also she stops, she's like, and she pulls them off, so, oh my gosh, do you know what I just heard? Right, no. She said, Princess Diana was killed in a car accident. And I, th I thought, what? God, that was, that, that was bizarre, Princess Diana. I thought, you gotta be kidding. And she goes, no. I said, no, I, I heard on the radio. Apparently it happened yesterday. Now, of course, over there, unless you listen to the radio, you wouldn't know about that. And it was getting towards the end of summer, so there's less and less people over there to stop by and share news or gossip or whatever, you know. So, we had no way of knowing. So he said, I tell you what, we'll take turns listening to the radio, you listen to it for a while, and then I'll listen to it, then we'll compare notes. So she gave me her headset, the, the Walkman, I put it on. And sure enough, I heard everything she heard that Diana was in a car accident in a, in a tunnel in Paris, you know, being chased, or they allegedly thought she was being chased by paparazzi, you know. And uh, so anyways, my ex, when I gave her back her headphones, she said, what do you hear? And I said, I heard pretty much the same thing you did, that she was in a car being um, in Paris being chased by paparazzi. And I'm not kidding, okay, I'm not kidding. My ex looked at me, and honest to God, this is what she said. She said, no, that Italian singer wasn't there. She thought I was talking about Pavarotti. <laughs> I bugged her about that for years. No wonder she divorced me. <laughs> no, that's not the reason, but it was so funny. She had never heard that term paparazzi before. Love these crumbs. So, she didn't know what I was talking about. But it was funny. So anyway. It was very unfortunate she died. Under those circumstances or any other. I remember, seven years earlier in 1986, the city of Vancouver was hosting Expo 86. And Prince Charles and Princess died come to Vancouver. Well, they're gonna be part of the opening ceremonies for, for Expo in Vancouver, but they came to uh, Vancouver Island. They stopped in Victoria and Nanaimo. And uh, I was along the little parade route and. I saw them drive by, and then we all went down to the waterfront where the ceremonies took place. They had some welcoming ceremonies downtown. And, um, I remember seeing Princess Di walking through the crowds, mostly a lot of elderly women, and they all had flowers to give her, and shake hands, and tell her how lovely she was, and all this, and, and um, I was at the back, she's about 25 feet away from me. And I'm looking at her thinking, I'm looking at one of the most famous women in the world. I was just so, so bizarre to see somebody that, that famous. So anyway, I was very shocked when that happened, because once again, you don't expect that from, from famous people that they could just suddenly just up and die.
That's French fry. I didn't know Lee's had apple pies. I'm gonna try it now for the first time. Exactly like A and W or Popeyes. Very sugary. I know Princess Di was the same age as my ex. That's very sugary. There it is, my friends. So, once again, Mac and Bryn, I hope you're enjoying yourselves in the land of awesome. Hope the rest of you are enjoying yourselves out there in the land of awesome. You know, please stay awesome. If you want shoutouts, hit me up. Before I go, I got a question for you. but I feel that I want to and I should because you people are just as much part of my channel as I am I've had a few people tell me that they can never remember my name or I'll fixate it and they, they have a hard time finding me on, online sometimes because they can't remember my, remember my name and I've actually thought about changing my name to something different something easier to remember Still pretending to ASMR. So let me know what you think. Okay. Until then, my friends, you look after yourselves, look after each other. Christmas is coming pretty soon. Okay. You take care, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye now. <laughs>